The Battle of Uman was the World War II German offensive in Uman, Ukraine against the 6th and 12th Soviet armies. In a three-week period, the Wehrmacht encircled and annihilated the two Soviet armies. The battle occurred during the Kiev defensive operation between the elements of the Red Army's southwestern front, retreating from the Lvov salient, and German Army Group South, commanded by Field Marshal Gerd von Rundstedt, as part of Operation Barbarossa. The Soviet forces were under overall command of the southwestern direction, commanded by Marshal Semyon Budyani, which included the southwestern front commanded by Colonel General Mikhail Kerponos and southern front commanded by General Ivan Tylenev. The 6th Army was commanded by Lieutenant General Ian Musychenko and the 12th Army by Major General P. G. Ponadelin. Chapter 1 Prelude In the initial weeks of Operation Barbarossa, Army Group South had rapidly advanced east, defeating several Soviet mechanized corps at the Battle of Brody 23-30 June. The armies of the Southwestern Front were ordered to retreat to the line of fortifications along the old Soviet-Polish border of 1939. Three and 48 motorized corps of the 1st Panzer Group, wedged in between the 5th Soviet Army, and 6th Soviet Army. On the 5th of July, Skvi motorized corps cracked a weak defense on the Stalin line and began to move rapidly, embracing the right flank of the 6th Army. A new Soviet counterattack was attempted on 9 July in the direction of Berdichu to prevent further advance of the 1st Panzer Group to the east. The fighting continued until 16 July, the 11th Panzer Division lost 2,000 men, but finally Soviet troops failed and on 16 July the German offensive continued dot further to the north, the mobile units of the 3rd Motorized Corps also overcame the Stalin line and reached the approaches to Kiev. The command of Army Group South intended to capture Kiev quickly, while Hitler and the High Command insisted on a strike in the southern direction, which guaranteed the encirclement of the Soviet troops in conjunction with the 11th Army. The compromise solution proposed the capture of Belia Sekov and after that a strike in the southwest direction towards the 11th Army. Such a decision left the possibility, instead of a strike to the southwest, to continue the offensive from Kiev farther east, beyond the Dnieper River. But Kiev was secured by a separate fortified area, and the rear communications of the 3rd Motorized Corps were under attack from the 5th Army. So, in the opening days of Battle of Uman the task of encircling the 6th and 12th armies from the north and the east was to be done by divisions of the Zxvi Motorized Corps only. To help them, the 3rd unit of the 1st Panzer Group, the 14th Motorized Corps, was transferred from the south and committed to action between the 3 and 48 motorized corps in the direction to the Baliasekov. Infantry units of the German 6th Field Army on the north hastened to replace the advanced tank units, the 17th Field Army on the west continued to pursue retreating forces of the Soviet 6th and 12th Armies. The advance of the 11th Field Army from the Soviet-Romanian border, was suspended by Soviet counterblows, and its attack from the south towards Venezia was postponed. Chapter 2 – Orders of Battle Most of the Soviet forces were severely depleted, having withdrawn under heavy assaults from the Luftwaffe from the Polish border, and the mechanized units were virtually reduced to a single corps after the Brody counteroffensive, its mechanized infantry now fighting as ordinary rifle troops. The Axis forces were divided into those of 1st Panzer Group, that had suffered significant losses in materiel, but retained combat effectiveness. And the large infantry formations of the German and, and Romanian armies that attempted to advance from the west to meet the armored troops north of Crimea, the initial strategic objective of Army Group South. Chapter 3 – The Battles of Encirclement Chapter 3 – Section 1 – The First Stage Since 15 July, the 48 Motorized Corps of Wehrmacht repulsed the counterattacks of the Soviet Badichev Group and resumed the offensive. The 16th Panzer Division broke the resistance of the Soviet troops and seized the city of Kazatin. On the left, the 11th Panzer Division was in the gap between Soviet armies, so by the 16th of July it made a deep breakthrough to the southeast. By the 18th of July, the division advanced another 50 kilometers, crossed the Ros River and captured Stavish. The 16th Panzer Division, 
which was forced to repel counterattacks of the Soviet Sixth Army, advanced slower, but by the 17th of July its forward detachments seized the Rosses Station, where was an important Soviet base of rear services support. The 18th of July, units of the Sixth Army managed to recapture the station. Further to the north, the 14th Motorized Corps advanced to Belia Sekov, but met counterattacks by the 26th Army. This army had no time to prepare the offensive, and its divisions didn't have time to concentrate. They couldn't beat out the 9th Panzer Division from Belia Sekov. Nevertheless, they for a short time captured Fastoff. The advance of the 26th Army soon stopped, but its attacks contained the mobile units of the 1st Panzer Group. A similar situation was with the Panzer Divisions of the 3rd Motorized Corps. Holder, the chief of OKH, irritably wrote on 18 July that the operation of the Army Group South is increasingly losing its shape, and that enveloping flank of the 1st Panzer Group is still hang about in the area of Badichev and Balia Sekov. At the same time the 17th Field Army from the west was approaching too quickly and Holder feared that the future cauldron will not trap significant enemy forces. Meanwhile, the 17th Field Army tried to implement a shortcut version of the original plan, according to which the Soviet troops were to be surrounded to the west of Vinitsia. But now Germans had no mobile units to hit Vinitsia from the north, and the offensive of 11th Field Army from the south was postponed. Therefore, from the north to Vinitsa 24 ID was marching. From the southwest on the 17th of July the 1st Mountain Division came and took under fire bridges across the southern Bug River. In case of German success, 50,000 troops from the Soviet 12th Army would have been surrounded there. However, the Soviet troops regrouped, and from the southern front a fresh Mountain Rifle Division was transferred, so they managed to contain the advance of the German infantry, and by the 21st of July to retreat through Vinitsia across the southern Bug River. By the 18th of July, the Soviet command realized that they did not have enough forces to seal the breakthrough of the 1st Panzer Group and restore the defense along the Stalin line. Budyani noted that on the right flank of the Soviet 6th Army was a gap of 90 kilometers, which is gradually filled with German troops. As a result, it was decided to withdraw the 6th and 12th Army on the line of Belia Sekov, Tetiev, Kite Gorod, Hasin. The 18th Army of the Southern Front, adjacent to the left flank of the 12th Army, also received an order to withdraw. The departure was to take place at night and be completed by the 21st of July. The problem was that the German tanks of the 48 and 14 Motorized Corps had already broken through this line. However, the Soviet command planned to fix this problem by the offensive of three infantry corps, which was to strike southwest from Kiev. In addition, on 18 July the 2nd Mechanized Corps received an order to transfer from Southern Front to Uman, to meet the Skskvi Motorized Corps of the Germans. In turn, High Command of the Wehrmacht on 19 July decided to change the Barbarossa plan. Units of the Army Group Center, instead of attacking Moscow, had to hit the south and north to surround the Soviet troops and prevent their withdrawal. The close task of the Army Group South was the encirclement of the 6th and 12th Soviet armies west of the Dnieper. At the same time, on 18 July, Holder and the command of the Army Group South decided that the attack on Uman would not be sufficient. At Uman had to go only part of the right flank of the 1st Panzer Group, and the main blow should be directed further to the east, towards Krivoy Rog. Chapter 3 Section 2 Attempts to Retreat The second stage of the first offensive of the 26th Army began on 18 July, but also ended in failure. Thanks to the intercepted radio message, the German command knew about it in advance. Because of the north part of the line for retreat remained in the hands of the Germans, the 6th Army began to retreat in the southeastern direction, while preparing a counterattack against the German troops flanking it from the northeast. The counterattacks of the 6th and 12th Armies near Orativ, Monasterishja began on 21 July and forced the 16th Motorized and the 16th Panzer Divisions to go on the defensive. The Soviet 2nd Mechanized Corps, further to the east, 
attacked the 11th Panzer Division, and stopped its advance to Uman. By stopping the advance of the German strike wedge, Soviet troops were able to continue the retreat, although the gap with the 26th Army remained. Holder was forced to admit, the enemy again found a way to withdraw his troops from the threat of an emerging encirclement. The 18th Mechanized Corps, which was in the reserve of the Southern Front, was ordered to advance to Uman on the 18th of July. However, it had to be used to close the gap between the 12th and 18th Armies, which was formed after the breakthrough of the 49 Mountain Army Corps to Venezia. This breakthrough led the Germans to the rear of the 18th Army of the Southern Front. The actions of the 18th Mechanized Corps covered the flanks of both armies, and allowed the 18th Army to retreat, and its attacks distracted the attention of the 49 Mountain Corps and alleviated a situation with the 12th Army near Venezia. By the 25th of July, the infantry divisions of Army Group South had driven to their mobile units and began to replace them. Near Kiev the 3rd Motorized Corps was liberated and began to move to Balia Sekov. His arrival finally crashed another attempt by the 26th Army to restore the continuous front line. So, the 14th Motorized Corps was able to continue the offensive in a southeasterly direction. To the north and northwest of Uman, the 16th Motorized and 16th Panzer Divisions were liberated, as well as the Motorized Lepstandarte Brigade. As a result, by July 31st the 16th Motorized Division of the Szkvi Corps captured Talnoy and Novarkangelsk and the 9th Panzer Division of the 14th Corps took Olshanka. Thus, the new line, appointed by the Soviet command for the retreat of the 6th and 12th Armies, was once again preoccupied by the Germans. However, this time there was nothing to parry the breakthrough, the Soviet reserves were completely exhausted. New divisions and armies, hastily formed by the Soviet command, were east of the Dnieper dot to the west of Uman, the command of the 49 Mountain Corps launched the fresh 125th Infantry Division, which took the town of Geisen on the 25th of July. Other parts of the corps rushed into the breakthrough, and the 1st Mountain Division achieved the greatest success, on the 26th of July it advanced 70 kilometers to the southeast and found itself in the rear of the Soviet troops. Attempts to restore the situation were not successful. In the fights of 25 to 27 July, the 49 Mountain Corps defeated the Soviet 18th Mechanized Corps and thus was able to outflank the 12th Army from the south. On the 31 of July, the 1st Mountain Division captured Golovanevsk. On the same day, the Soviet troops left Uman. The 6th and 12th Armies were on the territory around of 40 by 40 km surrounded by German troops from all sides except the south. However, the Soviet command still demanded them to attack in a northeast direction and tie in with the troops of the 26th Army. In fact, the main task of the southwestern direction was the creation of a line of defense along the Dnieper. The Soviet command mistakenly believed that the Germans would immediately move to the east, to the crossings over the Dnieper, thus the attacks of the 6th and 12th armies from the flank would hamper them. In fact, the destruction of the 6th and 12th armies was the German main task. By the 1st of August, the German command refused plans to surround immediately the 18th Army of the Southern Front in addition to the 6th and 12th armies, and directed 49 Mountain Corps to the east and northeast of Golovanevsk, along the shortest path to finish the surrounding near Uman. Chapter 3 Section 3, The Final Stage On the morning of the 1st of August, the commands of the 6th and 12th Armies sent a joint communication to the command of the Southern Front, with a copy sent to Stalin. The situation has become critical. The encirclement of the 6th and 12th Armies is completed. There is a direct threat of the disintegration of the combined combat order of 6th and 12th armies less than greater than there are no reserves less than greater than there is no ammunition, the fuel is running out. But the commander of the Southern Front, Tylenef, assured Stalin that the situation would be restored by a blow towards Ponadelin group of the fresh 223rd Rifle Division from the northeast, and the units of 18th Army from the south, while denying any supply difficulties. On the 1st of August, the Soviet 18th Army attempted to join the Ponadelin group from the south. 
but the divisions on the right flank of the 49 Mountain Corps repelled the attack of the Soviet 17th Rifle Corps, and by evening the 18th Army was attacked by units of the 52 Army Corps and Hungarian Mobile Corps. The commander of the 18th Army gave the order to retreat to Pervomaisk. At the same time, the attacks of the 49 Mountain Corps against the Ponadelin group distracted the Soviet units and allowed the 1st Mountain Division to move even further to the east. The just formed and inexperienced 223rd Rifle Division, while preparing for an attack, fell under the sudden blow of the 14th Panzer Division and was quickly defeated. A breakthrough towards Ponadelin group from the northeast was foiled. The command of the Southern Front continued to believe that only the leaked groups of the enemy are acting in this direction, while the main forces of the 1st Panzer Group have already entered the breakthrough, spreading to the south and southeast. On the 2nd of August, the units of the 1st Mountain Division reached the Sinua River, where they joined the 9th Panzer Division of the 14th Motorized Corps. At this time, other parts of the 48 and 14 Corps in heavy fighting repulsed all attempts of the Ponadelin group to break through to the east and northeast. The ring of encirclement was closed, but it was not yet strong. The encirclement was reinforced the next day by a second joining, formed when the German 16th Panzer Division met the Hungarian Mobile Corps in Pervomaisk. Chapter 4 After the Encirclement the command of the encircled Soviet armies well realized the severity of the situation and asked for help, but did not receive it. The troops of the Southern Front retreated, their battle line was broken several times. The troops of the 26th Army were defeated in the battles with the 1st Panzer Group and retreated to the Dnieper. All attempts by the Ponadelin Group to connect with it failed. On the night of the 2nd of August, the commander of the 6th Army Musaichenko asked permission to break out of the encirclement in the southeast direction, towards the 18th Army of the Southern Front. However, the command of the Southern Front repeatedly ordered to move to the east, to the border line on the Sinua River, which was firmly occupied by the troops of the 48 and 14 Motorized Corps. Moreover, further to the east the offensive of the 3rd Motorized Corps was developed. On August 1, 5, the Ponadelin group attacked mainly in this direction and only some parts of the 6th Army moved, to the south and southeast, entering into a head-on battle with the 49 Mountain Corps. On 4 August, German troops, by a blow from both sides, eliminated the bridgehead captured by the Soviet units on the eastern bank of the Sinua River near the village of Ternovka. By the evening of 4 August, the High Soviet Command had virtually lost interest in the fate of the remnants of encircled armies. In his negotiations with the commander of the Southwestern Front, Kerponos, Stalin demanded the creation of a powerful defensive line along the Dnieper, and mentioned the fate of the 6th and 12th Armies only in response to the question of Kerponos. Formally, on 6 August another Soviet offensive towards Uman from the northeast was planned, but in reality the armies were left to their own. In the south, the right flank of the 18th Army was scattered and partially surrounded near Pervomaisk. By 5 August the territory, which was still held by surrounded Soviet troops, was only 10 by 10 km, and it was totally under the fire. On the night of 6 August, Soviet troops made a desperate attempt to break out of the encirclement. This time they struck south, assuming that it is enough to break through the positions of the 49 Mountain Corps to connect with the units of the 18th Army to the north of Pervomaisk. In fact, Pervomaisk was lost on 3 August, but the command of the Southern Front did not report this. The command of the 6th Army planned to break out of the encirclement by collecting several last tanks in the Special Task Column. Detachments of the 1st and 4th Mountain Divisions failed to stop the night breakthrough, the Soviet strike forces marched, 20 kilometers and even took Golovanevsk. But instead of the Soviet 18th Army, they encountered German troops of the 52 Army Corps and 9th Panzer Division and were stopped. In the course of the breakthrough, they suffered heavy losses and by the morning of 7 August were mostly routed, only small groups without heavy weapons managed to exit the encirclement. 
The special task column was annihilated and the commander of the 6th Army Mu Zychenko was taken prisoner. The next night the breakthrough attempts were repeated. This time parts of the predominantly 12th Army, and the 2nd Mechanized Corps broke through to the east and northeast. Partially successful was only a breakthrough in the northeasterly direction, but barely small detachments were able to get out of the encirclement. The commander of the 12th Army, Ponadelin, was taken prisoner after his tank was hit. The commander and commissar of the 2nd Mechanized Corps left the encirclement only a few months later. On the afternoon of 7 August, Soviet troops grounded in the forests near the villages Podvisokoy and Kopenkovatoy began to surrender. Beside the commanders of both the 6th and 12th Armies, four corps commanders, and 11 division commanders were taken prisoners.